Welcome back, everybody, to Words with Wayman. I am your host, as always, Matt Wayman. Support us online on the interwebs, uh, Twitter, at Words with Wayman, Facebook, Words with Wayman. We're going to jump right in. Hot and spicy, part two, local St. Louis, uh, full-time artist. Show some love. Hope Ainsworth, everybody. Hi. Hey, thank you for coming back. Uh, you didn't run away after that first episode. I appreciate that. We're back for the part two. Uh, this one we just kind of like talk about uh, methods, process, and just like kind of how you go about doing your um, art thing. So um, kind of just explain to the people that probably wouldn't know what you do, kind of like what you do. Um, I like... To just make things, mostly. Yeah. I do a lot of visual art. Definitely. A lot of functional um, things. Super that cool functional are stuff. Art, yeah. I think. Shelving, um, cabinets, and stuff like that. Painting, as always. Um, you do one of these cool things, and I'm not, I, I definitely see it as an aesthetic, too. You work with a lot of puff paint. Yeah, um, puff paint and glue. Puff paint and glue, which creates a completely different. Um, aesthetic too and I think involves people more in your work because you can go up and touch it yeah and like create an experience like a texture as opposed to yeah you can totally clean it if it gets too yeah and how did you discover that um well I did I remember doing a painting in puff paint Mm -hmm. and it was a small painting maybe 10 by 12 yeah it cost 60 bucks just for the paint. <laughs> really? So I had to figure out a new method. And yeah. I decided to use glue and just tint it with acrylic, food coloring, cool. whatever. So that's a, so just because the glue is so much cheaper? Yeah, it's way cheaper. It doesn't get the same effect. Yeah. And it kind of bleeds together. Definitely. So, um, yeah, it's a longer process. Yeah, because it takes a longer time to dry. And yeah. you have to use, sometimes you probably don't know how it's going to set. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes... Sometimes the colors will change mm-hmm. as it dries. Um, Which is a cool yeah, thing, too. Yeah, move on, yeah. Yeah, because then it creates a different thing that you didn't even necessarily know but was going to be in there in the first place. Yeah. So is that just a thing of just, like, probably being bored for you that you have found these other mediums, but also, like, you still stay true? Like, you still do a lot of canvas work? Um, yeah, I still like to paint and draw and do all that stuff, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get bored. I got to keep, I got to keep changing it yeah. up. And every time I always come back, I always see, you know, 5, 10, 15 brand new pieces. So it seems like you create a, a massive amount of work, which I think is fantastic, too. Yeah, I've had three years here in St. Louis. Just, yeah. I mean, starting over, I had that show in New Orleans yeah. where I moved and sold mm-hmm. everything. So I had to completely start over. And that, from what I understand, was your first gallery that you did? Uh, that was my second solo okay. show. Okay, nice. I had one in Kansas City. Awesome. Uh, a few years before yeah, yeah, yeah. I was moving then. Mm-hmm. So it's basically been my pattern is every time I'm about to move, i got to sell everything. <laughs> so just put on a gallery at that point. What is the thing um, that you th- do you not want to pursue getting into like some of these galleries and stuff like that? Or is it just like, because I know it's a system and I know it's like. A, yeah, I will. Yeah. It, dep- it depends. Yeah. Um. I try to find galleries that will sort of let me hang things the way I want it hung. Yeah. Let me have kind of a party, mm-hmm. live bands. Yeah. Um, less like a gallery show, more like a party with some yeah. art. Yeah, I think that's kind of like the way I see it kind of going a little bit too, as opposed to like a, from what people look at, from maybe like more of a stuffy or a pretentious respective towards art. Yeah. When it shouldn't be like that, it should just be like a party. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll go to those and I'll stay on, you know, I'll look around and I can't hang out, I can't hang out that long. I don't like that environment. Yeah. I mean, it just seems a little bit forced in some senses too, you know, and, and like maybe not like the best way because in the, even if you're going to buy something, I was probably going to already buy it anyway. Yeah. And plus, they're so expensive a lot of times, They too. really are. And if, you know, if you can find a place that'll let you show, and a lot mm-hmm. of them don't take commission, usually, yeah. I'll just let them pick a piece that they want, and that's the that's their payment. That's cool. And you definitely... <laughs> or they're advertising their... Free advertising. Yeah. Or just have art for their house, if they're really fans of art like that. Yeah. All of your stuff's super reasonably priced. Is that something that you came about over time? Yeah, I, I think that's really important to have affordable art. Um... 
I think everybody should have art. Yeah. I want art myself. So yeah. I collect and. And it still blows my mind when I walk into people's houses and they don't have like art anywhere. Or... I know it's weird. But I think it's a different <laughs> mindset too. You know, maybe it's like more super type A or like they just can. But I mean, if you're like looking at it for, to find inspiration all the time, I feel like it's kind of a crucial thing to have up. I think if it was more out, and I think if it was more out in the open, to where mm-hmm. more people could see it, then I think more people would be Probably. fans. Yeah, I feel like they're more not like yeah, that they're an outsider more. They're more inclusive and in with what art is, which is just pictures stuff people want to see or people don't want to see or just it's whatever. It's yeah. so open ended. Also. Another big thing I like to do is not take it too seriously and mm-hmm. have it be too intimidating. So I think yeah. that makes people scared about art. Absolutely. I think, like, why try to force that on somebody? I feel like that's, I mean, if it's not, not that it has to be universal for absolutely ever to get, or not that you just have to look at it and be like, I get that immediately, but to not just, like, challenge people out of a place where... They don't need to be challenged. It's just like this yeah. should be something cool. Yeah, I agree. What uh, What's your process like? Like, how do you cre- usually create materials? Does it come from an idea? Do you sketch and then eventually you like that sketch and paint it? Or? Um, usually the only time I sketch is whenever I'm not at home. Mm-hmm. And that's just because I have to jot down an idea and just kind of illustrate what I want it to be. And then I'll yeah. work on it. And it's usually just a one-time thing. Yeah. Like, I won't rework something over and over. Cool. So if you like it, then it'll make it to another medium or... Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, how does it most... It needs to be bigger or... Yeah. Something like yeah, that. blown up or... And you use the computer and stuff like that too to make... Yeah, I do some graphic stuff and mm-hmm. I started doing some stop motion. Yeah. Stuff like that. I Yeah. That's awesome. Everything is... Yeah. And I feel... I'm the same way like with comedy... And, um, like, I paint and do screen print and stuff. like It's all from the same spot. So it's like if you go do stop motion, it's not like I have to be the best at stop motion. It's like that's just another medium for you to be able to exactly get a message across. Yeah, I'm probably not a master at any of these, but... But if you enjoy doing them, it's, yeah. it's a good time. So I know that uh, you have been... Now you're full-time art after that job. Um, but you, I know you're doing some book illustrating for a little while. Uh, when you're Oh, those. yeah, I did a... Um yeah, I did a book cover for a lady here when I first moved to St. Louis. Yeah. Uh, she wrote a book about uh, female wrestlers. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so I did her, I did her uh, cover for That's her. pretty cool. And how does that stuff come about, like the commission stuff? Um, well, she was pretty random. She, she put something on Craigslist, which was the first thing. Uh, you know, I just moved to St. Louis looking for a job, yeah. looking for any kind of work, found her. Um, other than that... It's usually, it's usually friends that commission me, people cool. that I already know. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you, I got last Christmas a portrait of myself with a stand-up comedy microphone, <laughs> huh? Which I love. And Metallic Wayman. Metallic Wayman. <laughs> if I never turn to a star, at least I'll be a star up on that wall. <laughs> <laughs> For a little bit, okay? Can I get some respect out there? People down in Pensacola, Florida, I need some respect. <laughs> But that's a cool thing too, because I mean that's that's I'm sure sometimes out of your comfort zone too, and just but it's you kind of just like have to do stuff like that. Yeah, I've gotten to the point though where I can, I've gotten better at turning people down on ones that I don't want to do. Yeah. So. Just like terrible stuff. <laughs> portraits of kids. Yeah. Which I'll I would love to do if they'd let me make them look a little weird and a little silly. They but. just want an actual portrait of the child? Yeah, photograph painting. Those always come out so creepy anyway, because they just look like little like, <laughs> I know, they're always adults, so off. right? Like, they all just look like they were, you're trying to draw that child as best as possible, it just comes up looking like a, a terrifying adult. <laughs> like, a, <laughs> from the, a lot of us that I've seen, it just, like, is weird, weird to me. Why would you want a portrait? Okay. Parents out there, <laughs> if there's any parents listening out there, do not try to commission her to paint your kit or yeah, to draw it. <laughs> all the time. All these Craigslist things happen all the time. Do you find that you create at a specific time in the day, or is it one of those things that you can kind of just sit down and crank out? No, I used to be able to work really well at night, but now as soon as I get up in the morning and I get up around 9, mm-hmm. uh, immediately start working, yeah. and I'm good pretty much all night. That's awesome. Yeah. So it just flows. But it's probably because you don't have that job that you had to go to in the morning now. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. that's the problem, too. It's like even when you go work a full day job and then you come back, it's like you are tired, but you know this is the only time that I'm going to have to... Yeah, it hardly ever happens. 
you can't wake up at 6 a.m. and be like, I'm going to do two hours of art before I go to work at 8 a.m. or something like that. I tried different systems yeah. of, um, you know, sleeping right after work and waking up early in the morning, super early in the morning yeah. and doing that, and it didn't work. I tried staying up all night working and then yeah. going to my job. That didn't work. Crazy. So you yeah. tried, tried them all. Yeah, so I just, you know, sort of went part-time, mm -hmm. kept cutting hours, and then eventually full-time artist. Nice. So how are you making that kind of work now? Do you have your pieces hanging all uh, over St. Louis or? No, I haven't got, I'm so terrible with the business part of it. Yeah, it's the hardest part. Yeah, can't do that. But uh, yeah, I usually just post stuff online and people get a hold of me and they come over and pick it up. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's been working. And it's free for advertising. It's like you have to, to pay commission for anybody or... Yeah. And people see it, I'm sure. You can track your website views and stuff like that and see how many people check it out. Yeah, I'm trying to figure all that stuff out. Nice, but that's been working like full-time for you for a couple months? Um, well, it's taken me a while to build up some work, but the more I get out there, the more, the more people are contacting me, I guess. That's pretty awesome, because I'm sure that's a big jump, too. I mean, even... Um, I wouldn't know how that goes to go full... And that's why I do this podcast. It's because it's cool to talk to people that are full-time in these creative aspects but i'm sure it was like a lot of stress or you know i mean you have to make that money pressure right when you start to do it yeah so is it dicey there for a little bit well i had a little bit of money saved up from my job and sprinkles here to help me feed me yeah the sweet boy standing right behind you just peering through all of us with his eyes in, in the, the nicest way possible <laughs> real sweet prince <laughs> Yeah, so there is that support system in some ways, too, which is very important yeah. um, to have. But um, so now, how many pieces do you produce a week normally? Um, well, I have multiple, usually I have multiple stuff going. Um, well, that's hard to say. Mm -hmm. I try to finish one thing a day. That's my goal. Nice. And if not one thing, I feel good about what I've accomplished. Yeah, <laughs> so if you've, I like, just, started. Oh, yeah, I'll just keep going until... Until I feel like I should be done for the day. Oh, so like 9 a.m. until you feel like you've got everything done that you've wanted to, which is probably what, normally around like 3 or 4 or 5? Yeah. So it's like a full... Well, no, sometimes I'll go till I go to bed. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Because I find some people that go full-time on this stuff, they don't necessarily make the change where they're putting all that time in there anyway. But you were doing so much time before that anyway. Um, so much less. Mm hmm Yeah, maybe one thing a month okay. I mean I can get small things done but paintings I have paintings from uh, I have one from New Orleans that I brought back that I never finished yeah so that's three years ago crazy and then other ones that I started whenever I first moved here I'm just now beginning to finish really yeah <laughs> but I mean that's the process maybe you, at that time you weren't ready to finish or maybe the idea wasn't there to actually like follow through on it yeah I'll get stuck mm -hmm. I have to look at it for a while I find myself doing the same thing with stuff it's like I don't know what it is but I know it's not I know that the idea is not there all the way so I might as well just put it aside and yeah. And then that with jokes all the time because then I tell them and people are like ooh you should have worked on that for a little bit longer <laughs> That was aggressive. That's right. <laughs> to force that down our throat. So the plan is, um, from what I've heard, you're you're gonna move out to Kansas City in a little bit. Yeah, hopefully next month. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Gonna, so there's a plan up there to do art as always, I'm sure, but to get a little job. Yeah, I may get a part time job just to, you know, get started. Mm -hmm. And um, instead of having my moving sale <laughs> that normally happens mm -hmm. i'm just going to take everything up there so i don't have to start cool. over again and because that's try a lot to get out everything that you have and probably having to take a price cut too to be able to sell this to people yeah yep but you need the money when you're leaving <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i've lost a lot of money doing that's just a little business move too yeah well it's something to get me to the next place yeah so sometimes it's worth it, it you is. know i'm sure i mean if you definitely absolutely have to have that money where um five years best case scenario what would your life and career be like um i guess to be making at least a nurse's salary <laughs> I don't want doctor money. I don't want PA money, okay? I would be totally happy with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, just people to do it on my own, fine, just doing the things I want to do. Nice. 
and uh, not doing things I didn't want to do. Yeah, which is work for some jerks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, that is the coolest way. That's how quickly these things go. That we're coming down to the end of part two. I think that is one of the the best ways we could round this down. Uh, but just quickly, once again, just give everybody um, all your contact info if they want to get in touch with you to buy some art or just to chat, maybe. <laughs> just kidding, she's working down in Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> so what it's uh what killy killy power killy killy power yeah on facebook instagram yeah facebook instagram etsy etsy nice check everybody out there check that out follow us online at twitter words with wayman on facebook words with wayman uh thank you so much for doing this yeah thanks way no problem um it's been my pleasure and thank everybody out there for listening guys this has been part two with hope ainsworth we will see you all soon